This is Abnormal Entertainment. Welcome, everybody, to the Cinema Head Cheese Pod Short for The Tick. This is Kevin Moyers, and I was really excited to hear that The Tick would get another uh, live-action iteration. If you remember, back in 2001, we had a version with Patrick Warburton and Nestor Carbonell, and I uh, don't remember the rest of the cast off the top of my head, but it was... Uh, not quite what the cartoon was. There wasn't a ton of crime fighting in general, but it was fun. It was silly. It didn't last many episodes. I think there were only six or eight or something like that, and not all of them aired. Um, the DVD has all of them. I know that, but it was a fun series, uh, more like... Um, more like a Seinfeld with superheroes, really. Uh, you didn't get all of the characters from the cartoon, and I assume the comic book. I never read the comic book, but I did watch the cartoon regularly. You got, uh, instead of Deflator Mouse, you got Batman Well, which was Nestor Carbonell. Um, I don't know if there was a copyright issue with the opera <laughs> but i think that was the problem um i think uh, uh there, were, there were other characters that were changed to other heroes and whatever the reason is um the weird part about the whole thing is that the original creator of the tick has written every version so uh it's kind of interesting really because you don't see that that often. I mean, it's nice when that can happen, but uh, it, it's very rare. And, you know, as someone who has worked on a comic book that became a movie, uh, it's nice that Dave Hayes, who created it, got to uh, got to write the screenplay as well. So it's uh, Ben Edlund is the creator, and the whole story is that he that I've read anyway, is that he owned a comic shop and created the Tick as a mascot for the shop. He later turned it into a cartoon, and then it uh, became a TV show. So it's pretty cool, but the way this show works is it's an Amazon original, and Patrick Warburton, by the way, the, the original TV live-action Tick, is a producer on this, which is pretty cool. Uh, he helped get it made. But... They did six episodes for Amazon, and that's unusual. Amazon generally will do a uh, pilot, see how that works, and then go with the rest. Now, the good thing with this is that it's an existing property. People already know it. It already has a fan base, so it's not like you're going to have an instance where somebody's going to watch the pilot and go, eh, Let's skip it. You know, this kind of thing, people are going to want more. And uh, the angle they took on this version of the show, I thought was great. Because the Tick is not the central character here. It's actually Arthur, which, uh, which is cool. And there might be some spoilers in what I'm telling you. Always a possibility on the podcast I will do my... Best not to, but the general idea is that Arthur is not well mentally. Um, he's an accountant. He has a day job. He has uh, Dot, his sister, uh, kind of keeping an eye on him because, you know, he's he's just, he struggles. Um, and uh, he has episodes where... 
he sees things, he forgets things, stuff like that. But, again, he's able to hold down his accounting job and an apartment and all of that. So, uh, the, the big driver of, for Arthur is that he believes that the terror is still alive. He's supposedly dead. He's played by Jack Earl Haley. Um, supposedly died back in 1998. Arthur doesn't buy it. And the reason Arthur is so focused on <laughs> the terror is that there was a superhero team um, who <laughs> they were killed by the terror and their jet crash landed on Arthur's father as Arthur watched. So it, it, it was jarring and uh, he actually develops an eye tick. So as the tick appears... To Arthur, while he's kind of trying to track uh, the terror, he thinks the terror is alive. He thinks the terror is coming back. Um, you're not really sure if the tick is uh, real or a figment of Arthur's imagination, because uh, Dot does say, "Well, you see things and you hear things and stuff like that." So it's kind of interesting. Um, the the whole thing's six episodes, and it's a fairly uh, complete story within that six. But you you definitely need and want more. It's really just getting the tip of the iceberg. The main villains in this are uh, Ms. Lint, who has the power of static electricity, and uh, you know it it it, uh, it shows. That's <laughs> how she got the name Ms. Lint. Um, there's a guy named Overkill who, uh, is sort of a, an anti-hero. He's pretty good. He's, he's not a villain. Uh, Ramses is another villain who is interesting and also kind of a rival to Ms. Lint. They don't get along as well as they could. Um, that's pretty interesting. Uh, there's the very large man, <laughs> Uh, Superion is one of the other superheroes. You don't see much of them, but, uh, you know, there, there's all kinds of stuff in here that's really just bizarre and crazy and fun. So, um, Peter Serafinowitz is the tick. He's really enjoyable. I'm kind of surprised in the six episodes that were released that, uh, we didn't, uh, we didn't hear Spoon, uh, through the entire thing. <laughs> So, uh, I was kind of like, oh, okay. <laughs> That's unfortunate. But if you want to know where you've seen him, if you're into the tick, if you're into superheroes, he was Denarian in Guardians of the Galaxy. So, that's you, you'll know his face the second you see him. And, uh, you know, it'll, uh, it'll hit you once you, you realize who Denarian is in Guardians of the Galaxy. So he's, he's uh, kind of the the lead pilot in Nova Corps. So anyway, I thought he did a great job. He had that sort of one-note personality of the tick, which uh, was really great. Um, according to IMDb, it says there are 10 episodes. So I'm not sure when the rest will be released. I'm not sure why they've only dropped six um, maybe they'll do more soon. I have no idea, but it doesn't really seem like the other four, uh, the other four would be, uh, I don't know, like sitting around, like they should be part of season one. It should, shouldn't be another season, but I, I don't know how they work it. It's just so weird on Amazon and I'm kind of new to it. Uh, so far, I've watched the first season of All or Nothing, but I am a Cardinals fan, and reliving a season that ended miserably is what every sports fan would like to do. But uh, it was kind of fun. Um, the second season is the Rams and in Jeff Fisher's last season, and it's interesting but kind of tough to watch <laughs> because uh, they're just so fucking bad. But uh, anyway, The Tick, thoroughly entertaining not sure what they're doing with the last four episodes or when they're going to be released but i hope it's soon 
Um, it's just a lot of fun stuff, and it's really Arthur's origin story. That's all I can say about it. It's it's great. Um, it's great to take that angle, really. And maybe Ben Edlin wanted to do something different with it. You know, who knows? I mean, again, I don't know how the comic book started. I don't have that information, but it was a blast. I would check it out. And they're all half-hour episodes. You can burn through it in no time and uh, really enjoy it. Uh, one thing I was concerned with, because I, I was like, well, it's on Amazon. It can be edgy, whatever. Uh, is it kid-friendly? Um, I, I watched the first two and decided my daughter could watch it. Um, I mean, she's nine now, so, or, you know, just turning nine. So, um, there's uh, a lot of swearing, but, you know, there is out of me. So, (laughs) you know, that's fine for her. If you don't let your kids watch PG 13 kind of stuff, I mean, they say fuck a little bit more than that. It's, it's not uh, rated at all that I know. But, you know, shit and fuck. It's not really, uh, there's nothing sexual in it. Um, I don't remember if you see, uh, like, you know, a bare ass or anything like that. But but there's no uh, no nudity to my recollection. No, there's no nudity or anything like that. Yeah, because I did sit and watch the whole thing with my daughter, and that would have been an awkward thing. Uh, not for me so much as for her. She would have made a big deal, and she didn't, so... <laughs> That's that's my kid. Uh and if you've listened to enough of these you've heard her on here, so but uh but yeah, she she wanted to turn away from it a couple times, but in the end, like uh, almost like she was bored a little, but I think she had her mind on uh re watching all of the flash. So <laughs> uh I I did get up to go to the bathroom at one point and we paused it and she left Amazon for Netflix to watch Flash. I'm like, Hey, we're in the middle of an episode. <laughs> that's rude. But uh, we did sit and watch the whole thing, and she liked it. I don't think she loved it, but she liked it. So, you know, gauge things that way if you want to watch it with your kids. But, um, you know, and I would go a little bit older, not not a five-year-old or something. So, you know, or if a kid that's used to that kind of language. It's not rampant throughout, but it happens, you know. So, anyway, um, it's a fun show. Check it out. And thank you for tuning in. I do appreciate it, as always. Uh, head to cinemaheadcheese.com for more, uh, more of these, more reviews, uh, some movie news now and again, and abnormalentertainment.com for all of our podcasts. So that's there. If you want pop culture, check out Masterpiece Theater, of course. You've heard many of that crew on this show. Also check out Anywhere But Here, which is uh, a show that's new to us. They just hit their 200th episode uh, right after joining our network. So Ant and Tom from England, we are now, uh, well, three countries strong. So we have uh, England, Australia, and the U.S. So it's good stuff. Um, yeah, and that's all I have. I'm rambling. Thank you for tuning in. I appreciate it, and we'll see you next time. Subscribe and download back episodes of Cinema Head Cheese, the podcast, and read all of our movie reviews and news at cinemaheadcheese.com. Email us at cinemaheadcheese at yahoo.com. Search Cinema Head Cheese on Facebook and tweet us at CIN Head Cheese. And for more podcasts, books, comics, blogs, and videos, head to abnormalentertainment.com. You've been listening to the Abnormal Entertainment Network.